Hello, and welcome to our next free YouTube tutorial. This time around, once again, I'm going to go back to a question that came in the other day, show you what the question is, and then show you how you can easily answer this when it comes to your own financial models and valuations. So here's the question. How do you decide what item to project as a percentage of, such as accounts receivable as a percent of revenue or inventory as a percent of COGS? Does it depend on how the line item you're trying to project is used by the company? What the line item you're trying to project is composed of? Or is there another way I am missing? Now, the way this question is phrased right now may be a little bit unclear to you, especially this top part. So I'm going to rewrite it a bit and show you what the student's intended meaning here actually is. What he's really asking is, when you project balance sheet line items, how do you decide what to link each item to. So for example, if you look on a company's balance sheet or statement of financial position under IFRS, how do you decide what you should link accounts receivable and inventories and other assets to? And then on the liabilities and equity side, what about items like accounts payable, accrued expenses, deferred revenues, and then these other type line items as well. So that's what he's asking about. What should you link accounts receivable to? What should you link prepaid expenses to? What should you link deferred revenue to? So our plan for this lesson is that first off, I will give you an answer to this question, sort of. It's not going to be a universal rule that you can always use, but I will explain how to think about it. Then I'll give you some rules of thumb you can use for projecting specific line items. I'll give you an example for Atlassian, which is a software company that we use in one of our case studies, and I'll show you how to use it to check your work. And then I'll show you a bit more about how to handle random line items on the balance sheet that do not seemingly fit into other places. And then we'll do a recap and summary of everything here. So the answer to this question is that there are some general rules of thumb that apply to common items. but you're never going to know exactly what to use for every single line item on the balance sheet for every single company out there. There are just too many different variations and too many different line items. So what I would encourage you to do instead is to focus on why you are projecting these items in the first place, which is namely the cash flow impact. Because remember, if you really wanted to, for a three statement projection model, you could actually skip the whole balance sheet if you really wanted to, and you could just track the company's cash balance, and then you could go down, and if they had debt, they don't have debt here, but if they had it, you could track their debt balance, maybe keep track of equity, and you could skip everything else in between. And the reason why you can do that is because ultimately these items, like accounts receivable and inventory and other assets, and then payables, accrued expenses, and so on, their ultimate impact is on the cash flow statement. They're going to impact the company's cash flows, and depending on the direction that they change in, the company's cash flows are going to go up or down or stay about the same. So if you keep that in mind, you can figure out what to do in most cases here. The problem, in my opinion, is that a lot of people tend to lose sight of the forest for the trees with this question. And we'll get really detailed questions from people saying, how do I project this line item? How do I project this one? What should this one be linked to? Should this be linked to operating expenses or total expenses or COGS? And they get a little bit too wrapped up in the specific line items to link everything to, when in a lot of cases, it doesn't really matter at all, or at least nearly as much as you think it does. The real reason why it matters, as I just showed you, is that it all goes back to the company's working capital and how that impacts their cash flow and free cash flow. So does a company spend in advance of its growth? If that's the case, then the change in working capital is going to be negative as a percent of the change in revenue. So the classic example here is a retailer. A retailer has to buy inventory before it sells it to customers. And so it is going to spend money on working capital before it can actually realize sales from spending that working capital. As a result, it's going to need more cash to grow as its sales grow. On the other hand, some companies have the opposite situation where they actually get extra money as a result of this growth. 
The classic example is a subscription software company or any type of subscription company that collects money from customers upfront in cash and then delivers the service over time. Now, if that's the case, the change in working capital is going to be positive as a percent of the change in revenue. Because as a company's revenue grows, it actually gets additional cash from those business policies, namely collecting cash from customers up front. So that is what you really have to think about when it comes to this point. And that is what a lot of people lose track of when they get wrapped up in the minutia of how to project different line items. So here are the general rules of thumb for these items. And I've been referring to this example for Atlassian throughout. So we're actually gonna go back and take a look at a few of these examples here for their balance sheet and cash flow statement drivers. But let me give you the general rules of thumb first. With these, you really have to think about what the balance sheet line item really means. And then once you do that, it's usually pretty simple to figure out what you should link it to. So for example, accounts receivable and deferred revenue you're pretty much always going to link these to revenue because both of these are going to trend with sales. Now, for some companies, you'll do variations of this. It may not be linked exactly to revenue. You may split it into subscription versus one-time revenue or credit sales versus total sales or something like that. But these are both generally going to move with the company's top line sales because accounts receivable represents what the company has recorded as revenue but not collected in cash yet. And then deferred revenue is the opposite. It represents what they've received in cash, but have not yet recorded as revenue. Inventory is almost always going to be linked to cost of goods sold or COGS because for a company that sells physical products, if they have inventory, then when they buy the inventory, it's not going to show up on the income statement initially. It's only going to show up listed as a cost of goods sold when the product is actually sold and delivered to the customer. So inventory is pretty much always going to be linked to cost of goods sold. And then items such as accounts payable, accrued expenses, and prepaid expenses, these could go in many different ways. You could link them to cost of goods sold or operating expenses or both COGS and OPEX combined. It really depends on what's in them and what type of company it is. So for example, if it is a manufacturing company and they spend a lot on buying inventory from suppliers, you're probably gonna link accounts payable to cost of goods sold in that case, because it probably trends pretty closely with their inventory needs and what they're recording as expenses upon selling products. On the other hand, if you are dealing with a software company, you might not do that. You might link this to operating expenses instead. Accrued expenses and prepaid expenses tend to be linked to operating expenses in most cases. But again, it depends on the company and exactly what's in these items. But these are some general rules of thumb as you're thinking about it. And then there may be other line items here as well. So for Atlassian, for example, if you go down and look at their balance sheet, they do have other non-current assets and then they have other non-current liabilities, and you will see similar items for a lot of other companies out there. You have a few different options for these. If they're relatively small, you might just hold them constant and not worry about it. If you really don't know what to do and they are changing by some amount, you might just link these to revenue and make them trend with the company's sales. And then there are some more random line items. So with these, maybe they do not fit into one of these categories above, but they do match up to one certain item on the income statement. Or if you cannot find a matching item on the income statement, then you might just simplify and make these a percent of revenue as well. Because remember, it goes back to our rule from before that what really matters is the change in working capital as a percent of the change in revenue. So if you really can't figure out what to do, you can never really go wrong by linking one of these items to revenue. It may not be the best way to do it, but as long as you get this part right, the rest of your projections and your cash flow analysis will be fine. So let's look at an example of a real life projection for Atlassian. We'll go up here and you can see that I've projected trade and other receivables as a percent of revenue. Inventory is a percent of COGS. Payables, accounts payable is a percent of OPEX. Accrued expenses is a percent of OPEX, and then deferred revenue is a percent of revenue. 
And those are the only balance sheet line items that we're actually projecting there. So the others we're holding constant or we're linking in from elsewhere, or we're doing a simple average as a percent of revenue or something like that. But the others are all much smaller and less significant. So you might look at all that and say, okay, so receivables is linked to revenue. That makes sense. Inventories is linked to COGS. Payables, we're not really sure, but we're linking it to operating expenses. Same for accrued expenses. And then deferred revenue, we're going to link to revenue because it corresponds to the company's subscription revenue that they have received in cash, but not yet recognized as revenue. How do we know that any of this is correct though? In other words, how can we check our work and make sure that the numbers we have and the way we're projecting this actually make sense? So to check this, what you can do is sum up the change in working capital from the cash flow statement. So once you already have your balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow projections set up and laid out, you can simply go down to the cash flow statement and take the changes in operating assets and liabilities, also known as the change in working capital, from the bottom part of the cash flow from operations section, sum up everything here, and then you can copy this across. And then you can look at this as a percent of the change in revenue. So in this case, I'm gonna take our revenue in this year, subtract it from the old year. We have that. And then in the prior year, revenue was around 59 million. So I'm just gonna enter that as a hard-coded number. Copy this across. And then we can copy it across for this future period as well. We can also look at this as a simple percent of revenue and use that to check our work as well. So we have that set up. And if you look at the historical numbers, it actually jumps around quite a bit here. If you take the average, it comes out to around 23%. And then the average as a percent of just revenue comes out to around 2.8%. Now in the future period, if you look at this, the change of working capital as a percent of the change in revenue goes from around 3% up to more like 11% to 19%. And as a percent of revenue, it stays in around the 1% to 2% range. Both of these numbers strike us as reasonable because they are in line with the historical averages. 2013 was a bit of an exception, but other than that, it seems like this company has a slightly positive change in working capital as a percent of the change in revenue. So as I say here, the historical average is 23%, mostly because they are switching to a subscription-based business model and they have very little in terms of inventory requirements. So we think our estimates of 10 to 20% in future periods are reasonable. We are getting some cash flow benefit as we grow, but it's not a huge benefit. We're not getting a 30% or 40% benefit. It's more like 10 to 20% of the increase in revenue each year. Now you might be looking at this and saying, okay, well, what if we got this wrong? So let's say for example, that we link trade and other payables to revenue rather than operating expenses. And in most cases, when you do this, it is pretty obvious that you've made a mistake. So here, for example, let's say I link trade and other payables to revenue instead. So we're linking to our revenue line item down here. We're still taking the historical average, but look at our trend lines over here. Our change in working capital as a percent of the change in revenue seems to not make as much sense. It drops to a negative number in the first year, and then it becomes positive, but it never quite reaches anything close to the old historical average. And then the change in working capital as a percent of revenue also becomes negative in the first year and becomes slightly positive after that. But in general, we do not get that same good trend line that we had before. So that's an indication that we might have done something wrong here. So when you get something like that and it starts jumping around by a lot, especially in future periods, it is really not ideal and it is a sign that your assumptions might be off. And so that's how you can check your work here. Now, the last thing I want to cover briefly is what to do when you have a more random type of line item. I'll pull up this model for EasyJet which is another company that one of our case studies is based on. On its balance sheet, they have some fairly standard line items, but on the liabilities and equity side, they have this line item for maintenance provisions. 
They have a long-term version and then a current or short-term version. We don't know exactly what to link it to upon first glance, although I would point out that it is a very minor item in the grand scheme of things. In total, it adds up to around 250 million pounds out of about two to three billion pounds in liabilities. So we're looking at an item that comprises maybe 10% of a company's liabilities. In this case, if you go up to the income statement, you'd see that they have this line item for maintenance, representing the maintenance expense for aircraft in the current period. And so by looking at that, you could probably infer that these line items are gonna be linked. Maintenance on the balance sheet, representing their future expected payments, and then maintenance on the income statement representing what they paid in the period shown for maintenance on their aircraft. So based on that, you could then go up and you would probably do what we did right here, which is to link the maintenance provisions to the line item on the balance sheet. And so that's exactly how we set that up. And to check your work, once again, you could do the same exact thing. You could look at the change in working capital as a percent of the change in revenue and see if it comes out to a reasonable number. And in this case, this is such a small line item that we would probably say, who cares? We could make this a percent of revenue if we really wanted to. That probably wouldn't even make that big of a difference because it's so small relative to some of the other line items on the balance sheet. So let's do a recap and summary now. When you build three statement projections like this, you really want to start with the end goal in mind. That end goal is usually measuring the company's cash flow and seeing how it changes over time, especially as its revenue grows or possibly as its revenue declines. The general rules of thumb here are that you link revenue related line items like accounts receivable and deferred revenue to revenue because both of these are gonna trend with sales. When sales increases, these are probably gonna increase. When sales decreases, these are probably gonna decrease. Inventory is pretty much always linked to COGS because that is what it represents and that's how the inventory expense is shown on the income statement when it's finally sold to customers. Accounts payable, accrued expenses, and prepaid expenses are generally linked to COGS, operating expenses, or possibly both depending on the company. Other type line items, you may hold constant or you might even link to revenue. And then random items that don't fall into one of these categories, you can generally find a matching income statement line item. If you really can't find it, you could hold these constant or as always, you could just make these a simple percent of revenue. To check your work, you have to think, think about whether the company spends in advance of its growth, in which case the change in working capital will be negative as a percent of the change in revenue. And if that's not true, if it's not consistent in future periods, you have a problem. Or think about whether the company gets extra money as a result of its growth. And if that's the case, the change in working capital will be positive as a percent of the change in revenue and you have a problem there if it's not. So that's a bit about how you can project the three financial statements and decide what to link each item here to.